My name is Michael, and I never thought I'd find myself working side by side with my mother-in-law, Linda. Yet here we are, at the edge of an old family vineyard in sunny California, ready to breathe new life into this neglected place. Linda, my wife Sarah's mother, had always been a challenging person. Our relationship had been strained from the moment we first met, but Sarah insisted that working together on the vineyard would help us bond. I was skeptical, but for my wife's sake, I was willing to try. The vineyard was in a sorry state. Years of neglect had taken their toll. Overgrown rows, broken trellises, and a dilapidated barn. But beneath all the chaos, I saw potential. With the right care and hard work, we could revive this place and perhaps even mend our relationship. The first days of work were grueling. Linda and I toiled under the scorching California sun, pulling weeds, fixing trellises, and getting the barn in order. Conversation was sparse and awkward, but gradually, the ice began to thaw. Over shared lunches in the shade of an old oak tree, we began to share stories and memories. I learned about Sarah's childhood and Linda's dreams for her daughter. She told me about her late husband and how much she missed him. For the first time, I saw her not just as a stern mother-in-law, but as a person with her own hopes, fears, and regrets. As the weeks went by, the vineyard began to transform. Green shoots of grapevines wound their way up the repaired trellises, and the barn became functional once more. But it wasn't just the vineyard that was changing. Linda and I were growing closer, our conversations more relaxed and friendly. Sarah was thrilled with our progress both on the vineyard and in our relationship. Yet beneath the surface of our growing friendship, something unexpected was brewing. Casual touches, lingering glances, and playful comments began to take on a new tone. I tried to ignore the growing tension between us, chalking it up to the long hours spent together under the hot sun. But with each passing day, it became harder to deny the attraction we were both beginning to feel. One evening, as we stayed late tying up grapevines, our hands accidentally brushed. A spark passed between us, and for a moment, time stood still. We froze, staring into each other's eyes, unable to look away. In that instant, I realized our growing closeness was about to cross a dangerous line. The question was, would we have the strength to resist this forbidden attraction? As summer gradually faded into fall, Linda and I found ourselves spending more and more time at the vineyard. Our combined efforts were bearing fruit, the grapes were ripening on the vines, and the barn had transformed into a proper wine cellar. But it wasn't just the vineyard that was blossoming. Our relationship was, too. Those awkward, tense first days were a distant memory. Now we eagerly anticipated our morning meetings over coffee, discussing the day's plans and sharing stories from our lives. Linda told me about her youth, her travels through Europe, and her passion for art. I shared my dreams of writing and of building a life with Sarah. Our work at the vineyard became a sort of dance. We moved in unison, anticipating each other's needs without words. Casual touches became more frequent and daring, glances more meaningful. The tension between us grew with each passing day, like a grapevine reaching for the sun. Sarah, consumed by her work in the city, seemed oblivious to the shift in our relationship. She was thrilled with our progress at the vineyard and how her mother and I had grown closer. I felt a pang of guilt for my growing feelings for Linda, but I couldn't bring myself to pull away. One day, as we were working late, a sudden downpour caught us by surprise. We took shelter in the barn, laughing and shaking off the rain. In the dim light of the single bulb, our eyes met and the laughter faded. The air between us crackled with tension, and I felt an overwhelming urge to touch her, to kiss her. As if reading my thoughts, Linda stepped forward, closing the distance between us. Her hand slid up my chest and I held my breath. We shouldn't, I whispered, but my words sounded unconvincing even to my own ears. She smiled, a mischievous glint in her eye. But we want to, she whispered back. In that moment, the last of my self-control crumbled. I pulled her to me, our lips meeting in a passionate kiss. Hands explored, clothes fell to the floor, and we lost ourselves in a whirlwind of forbidden desire. On the hard wooden floor of the barn, to the accompaniment of the rain and rumbling thunder, we made love with a desperate, frenzied passion. Later, lying in each other's arms, we were silent, stunned by what had transpired. The reality of our actions began to sink in, along with guilt and fear of the consequences. 
We agreed it couldn't happen again, that it was a one-time mistake. But even then, deep down, we both knew it was only the beginning. After that night in the barn, Linda and I tried to act as if nothing had happened. We threw ourselves into work at the vineyard, attempting to ignore the growing tension between us. But stolen glances and accidental touches told a different story. Beneath the surface, barely restrained emotions were simmering. Our secret meetings began almost by accident, lingering late at the vineyard, a stolen kiss in the shadows of the barn, a walk in the nearby woods that turned into something more. Each time we swore it would be the last, that we had to put an end to this madness, but our attraction to each other was too strong to resist. I was torn between guilt and passion. I loved Sarah. She was my wife and the center of my world. But with Linda, I felt a connection I couldn't explain, as if she understood parts of me I didn't even know existed. Our trysts were filled with passion and desperation, as if we were trying to steal every moment we could from fate, knowing it couldn't last forever. Sarah began to notice changes in my behavior. I became more distracted, often staying late at the vineyard and avoiding her questions about how the work was progressing. She joked that I was spending more time with her mother than with her, not realizing how close she was to the truth. Linda seemed to struggle less with guilt over our affair. She said life was too short to deny ourselves what made us happy, that sometimes you had to take risks for love. I wanted to share her confidence, but I couldn't shake the feeling that we were balancing on the edge of a precipice. Our liaisons became more reckless, stolen moments in the vineyard, secret meetings at a hotel in the next town over. It was as if we were daring fate to catch us. And one day, our worst fears came true. Sarah arrived at the vineyard unexpectedly, intending to surprise Linda and me. Instead, she found us together in the barn, locked in an embrace. Shock, pain, and fury mingled in her eyes. She turned and ran before we could say a word, slamming the door with such force that the walls shook. Linda and I broke apart, breathing heavily, caught off guard and awash with guilt. The reality of our actions had finally caught up with us, and we knew we had to face the consequences. With heavy hearts, we left the vineyard and headed home, knowing the most difficult conversation of our lives awaited us. The drive home felt like a march to the gallows. Linda was uncharacteristically quiet, staring out the car window with an unreadable expression. My head was buzzing with thoughts and guilt as I tried to find the words to explain our behavior. When we entered the house, Sarah was waiting for us in the living room, sitting on the couch with a glass of wine in her hand. Her eyes were red and puffy from crying, but they burned with anger. She looked at us and shook her head, unable to find the words. How could you? She finally said, looking at Linda. My own mother, I trusted you. Her voice trembled with emotion, and I felt the stab of guilt even more acutely. Sarah, I'm so sorry, Linda began. But Sarah cut her off with a wave of her hand. Don't. I don't want to hear your excuses. I want the truth. How long has this been going on? Her gaze darted between us, waiting for an answer. I sighed, realizing it was time to come clean. A few months, I said quietly. It just happened. We didn't plan it, but... But what? You couldn't resist? Sarah snapped. You decided your desires were more important than our marriage, our family? No, of course not, I argued taking a step towards her. I love you, Sarah. I never wanted to hurt you. I'm so sorry. To my surprise, Linda laughed, a cold, harsh laugh that sent shivers down my spine. Oh, stop it, Michael. Enough with the pretense. It's time to tell the truth. Sarah and I stared at her, confused. The truth, Sarah asked. What are you talking about? Linda straightened, a look of triumph in her eyes. The truth is, this was my plan all along, to seduce Michael, to destroy your marriage. You deserve better, Sarah. He was never good enough for you. My mind reeled, refusing to comprehend what I was hearing. This couldn't be true. Our feelings, our connection, it couldn't have been part of some elaborate scheme. But as I looked at Linda, I saw only cold determination in her eyes. Sarah was stunned, her eyes filling with tears. How could you? She whispered. I thought you loved me, Mom. How could you manipulate and betray me like this? Linda shrugged, seemingly unperturbed. I did what I thought was best for you, dear. Michael isn't the man you should have married. I always knew that. I just needed to make you see it. I stood there, numb with shock and betrayal. The woman I thought was my soulmate, whom I trusted, 
had been a master manipulator all along. Our connection, our shared moments, it had all been part of her cruel plan. I felt like a fool for allowing myself to be caught in her web. Sarah turned to me, her eyes filled with pain. And you, Michael? Were you in on this? Did you plan this with her from the start? No, I exclaimed, desperate for her to believe me. I swear I had no idea. I thought, I thought Linda and I had something real. I never wanted to hurt you, Sarah. Please, you have to believe me. But I could see the doubt in her eyes. And I couldn't blame her. How could she trust me after everything I'd done? I had betrayed her trust, shattered our family. And for what? A fleeting affair and a handful of lies? Linda watched our exchange with a smug smile. Well, I suppose my work here is done. See you around, dear. She turned to leave, but Sarah stopped her. No, Mom. You don't get to just walk away after what you've done. I... I can't forgive you. Not now. Maybe not ever. You've destroyed our relationship, our family. And for what? Some twisted revenge? Sarah's voice shook with emotion. Linda merely shrugged. Call it what you will. I did what I had to do. I hope one day you'll understand. Goodbye, Sarah. Good luck. With those words, she walked out the door, leaving our shattered family behind. The aftermath of the revelation was as devastating as the lie itself. Sarah couldn't forgive me for my betrayal, and I couldn't forgive myself for falling prey to Linda's manipulations. Our marriage, once seemingly unbreakable, crumbled under the weight of secrets and deception. The divorce was a painful but necessary process. Sarah couldn't look at me without tears and anger, and I knew I couldn't give her the life she deserved. We divided our assets and tried to move on, but sharing our mutual pain was impossible. The vineyard, once a symbol of new beginnings and hope, now stood as a painful reminder of my infidelity. I couldn't bring myself to go back there, every corner tainted with memories of my sins. Eventually I sold it, splitting the proceeds with Sarah. It felt like a final attempt at atonement, however small. Linda disappeared from our lives as suddenly as she had entered. Last I heard, she had moved to Europe, leaving a trail of broken relationships and shattered hearts in her wake. Sometimes I wondered if she regretted what she had done, if she realized the extent of the damage she had caused. But deep down, I knew the answer to those questions would bring me no peace. It took years to heal the wounds and rebuild some semblance of a normal life. I worked on becoming a better version of myself and slowly rebuilt a friendly relationship with Sarah. We would never be together again, but I hoped that one day we could trust each other again as friends. Looking back, I realize how destructive the power of lies and manipulation can be. I had allowed myself to be trapped by a forbidden passion, and it had cost me everything. But I also learned the power of forgiveness, forgiving others and myself. It was a long and difficult journey, but I knew I had to take it to move forward. Did you like this story? Let us know in the comments what you liked. Subscribe to our storytelling podcast. Also, don't forget to like and ring the bell so you don't miss more interesting stories. See you soon.